we go. Mm-hmm. I, I can't wait to talk about this one. Oh my God! I have been, <laughs> you, you know I've been head deep into it. I'm all up into Deborah Sherry and Rachel's. I'm all up in it, Kool Aid. I'm up in it. Do you hear me? So you, this, on the phone, on the phone with me is a literary extraordinary author, Valerie J. Lewis Coleman. She wrote this book with. Is he your cousin or your friend, Christopher Doc Reed? My, my cousin. Your cousin. This is hilarious it, it, it is this is i just want to know can i have the rights to the movie the forbidden secrets of the goodie box that's the name of the book gonna, you guys the we're fo- gonna bring you on board we're gonna we're gonna write in a character oh, no have no no movie. i ain't even got to be in the movie i just want to pre- i want the rights to want you give me the rights to the movie so you and doc can come out here to california or we come to dayton or wherever we shoot this movie and make this movie i'm just Amen. because it is they are they are so real they are so rich you have got them fleshed out so good i love the title of the book the forbidden secrets of the goodie box i love how you say that because it just it's the, the, when i put it, when i put it out the out the envelope girl i was like the forbidden secrets of the goodie box and I said, I got to read this. And when he explains what the goodie box is, and you would think, mm-hmm. you would think that professional women, well-educated, mm-hmm. well-developed, bright, mm-hmm. can go in a courtroom and rip a prosecuting, uh, 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 mm-hmm. uh, 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 prosecution witness to shreds. I mean, you going to jail because I'm that good. You know, mm-hmm. you would think that these women would have it all together. And you, I mean, did you hit the nail on the head with these women? Do you know these people? Y'all know you know these people. You just well, change no, your friend. Not. You change your friend's name to protect the guilty, innocent. Well, no, no, actually, there are. Each one of them is a little piece of me. I can say that okay. um, a little piece of me is in each character. But no, they are they are actually fictional characters. But they they are some of them are modeled after me some of them have little nuggets of, of some of my friends or just experiences that I've I've witnessed or uh, actually you know endured myself but at the end of the day because I'm a I'm um I'm an educated woman I have an undergraduate degree in engineering I have a master's in business and I am still when it comes to me and my mother said you have absolutely no common sense I have no sense when it comes to me I'm just confused I don't get it I know and I know so many professional, beautiful, talented, mm-hmm. wealthy women who mm-hmm. don't know a, they, they dumber than dishwater when it come to men. Just dumber what? than dishwater. And when I talk to them, see, take J. Anthony Brown, you know, from the time joining the morning show. Yes. And you write about yes. them in the book, too. You got all my friends. In the book. Yeah, I love, I love the Tom Jordan Morning Show. Oh, I, yeah, I mentioned him. That's obvious. I can't wait to tell them that they're mentioned in the book. And yeah. he always said, he always said, it take, he cracks me up. He always says, you women out there that don't know how to get a man and keep a man, you need to call Mother Love. Hunter, her husband yeah. been together for honey, and don't give me all of that because Mother Love a great big old woman and she got a good man. She got a fine man. So y'all sitting up here, you can't get, because y'all don't know nothing about me. And my husband and I just celebrated our 38th year together. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Either that or some one of us is going to heaven and the other one going to be zapped in the microwave section of hell. We just don't know which way it's going to go yet. I say he going to go to heaven. I won't be zapped in hell. But I'm working on being not being but half a heathen so I can get halfway. I can I at least get to see St. Peter and have to. Right, and he going right. to tell me you got some splaining to do. And I'll be like, oh, well, uh, uh, but he um, yeah, I know I got some splaining to do. That's why I'm trying to clean myself up now. But there are, women are so. So you, I mean, you got, oh my God. And Deborah in this book, I just wanted to jump in the book and slap her myself. Cause I could just imagine what she smelled like after Vincent pulled his thing. I just, oh my God. I couldn't believe you don't give it up after a month. And she was just all excited and just, ooh, this the one. And oh, he just feels so good. Oh, we just fit. And he, Vincent done bounced. Vincent got what he wanted. Vincent bounced. You know, that's right. That's what they do. I, I got the same husband for 38 years because you just can't give him everything all at once. That's right. 
You can't get married without can't. So now, where did what made you guys sit down and write the forbidden secrets of the goodie box? And I like the tagline. I like the tagline. What your father didn't tell you and your mother didn't know. And if your mama I did know, know it, she wasn't gonna tell you that she didn't that she was that stuck on stupid. Right, right, right. Well, the inspiration from the book was twofold. My cousin, uh, Christopher Doc Reed, is also in a music group. And um, I've been working with the group. Christopher is the name of the music group. been working with them for about three or four years. Mm-hmm. And out of that process, you know, we spent a lot of time talking and I got to know him better. Because he was a distant cousin. I didn't really know him that well. So I began to confide in him with some of the marital roles and some of the things that I was dealing with because he's great at relationships. He would say, well, when your husband does this, he means that when this happens, or if you go home and say this, this is what's going to happen. So he helped me get through uh, some of the challenges in our, in our marriage. So, and at that same time, I was at a point in my life, you know, let's say mid-life-ish, and I was like, there are things going on in my body, physiologically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, there's just things going on at this age in my life that I didn't know was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that my goodie box was going to be hollering at me from the other room if you don't set up making all that noise. Screaming. Scre- what are you trying Screaming. to do? Did, 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 did you forget about me down here? What's up with you? Chick, hey, right. we got I knees, boo. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing, then is I'm like, okay, I need to write a book to help. Because everything I do, I want to do to help people. And I don't that's just write beautiful. for the sake of entertainment. So I wanted to help people. My thing was, okay, I need to help women understand What's going on in this phase in their life, this season in their lives, you know. At the same time, Doc Reed wanted to write a, uh, wanted to write a book about relationships because he's been helping people for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not a, he's a songwriter, he's not a book writer. Mm -hmm. So even though he had a lot of the, the ideas and the content and the concepts and of course the man's perspective, he doesn't write books. Mm So he said, you know, we should write this book together. I think it'd be a great idea. It's like, yeah, you know, if we want to write one, yeah, let's talk about it. So we just started. Every morning when I was walking, you know, I don't know if you get to that point yet, but Deborah walked every morning. We would just talk about oh, yeah. the book. Oh, yeah. I'm all, I'm, all, so I'm all the way up to chapter 12 or somewhere. I'm up to chapter 13. I'm in chapter 12. I'm all ready to kill joy. Right, did that, oh, didn't I tell you I was oh, yeah. up in the book? Look, I, I, I mm-hmm. went, wait a minute, girl. When she went into Rachel's office and did the PowerPoint presentation of what she wanted, <laughs> what she didn't want, first thing I said in there on the very next page, I said, well, that's why she's single. And on the next, that's why she's single. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, she had a long, long she had a list long of list of what she wants and what she wants to do, and I understand that and I respect that because if you don't come to the table whole and come to a relationship whole, you know, it's mm-hmm. just like when Doc broke down to a one times one is one. Mm-hmm. So you 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 got you got to come one whole one whole to make one, and and mm-hmm. I, I I really liked the, I really appreciated his uh his male perspective on it without mm-hmm. dropping a lot of testosterone on it, but he dropped the testosterone on it. He tell a plain and simple. This, right. You, you right. need to understand, and if you this you do this, this is gonna happen. So he really mm-hmm. helped you in your relationship as well. Oh, yes, mommy. He helped, he's really helped me a lot with my husband, you know, even just understanding my husband and just even me because, you know, I mean, I, I'm, even though I'm married, men are still, you know, men are still going to approach you. They you know, don't and care. so men say crazy things and I'm like, oh, what in the world? He's like, oh, yeah. And men will come at me and because I'm so naive, I'm getting better, but <laughs> oftentimes I don't realize that they're even trying to flirt with you. The of the goodie box. Oh, yeah, right. they're trying to get it. they trying to get it to goodie box. Men have said to me, yeah. either, and I, I, you haven't seen me in a while, I've lost 111 pounds. And so mm. even when I was a big girl, I'm in the grocery store, men would come up to me and say stupid stuff like, I, I just know you married because you're picking out all the good food. I know a big old pretty girl <laughs> like you. I do, and get away from me, you vermin. I had right, one, right, one, right. one guy in New York said to me, are you married? I said, yes, I'm married. Well, are you married today? Uh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. What, what is wrong with you? Men are so goofy. And, and they're really not that complicated. They're really not that complicated. No, they're not. When you stop and think about it, men want peace. They want, if they drink, they want a beer, they want a drink, and they don't want you standing in front of the football game or the basketball game or whatever sporting thing that they like and come in there and talk about we need to talk. Why you didn't talk when the, before football season started? Right. You know. And so what is, what is one of the, one of, one of the biggest lessons you learned 
from your cousin from a from a that helped you in your marriage and and how much fun was it writing this book well he now actually i did all of the writing mm-hmm. um and i just used his content but as far as him helping me with the marriage i think i think the biggest thing was he, he was a, like a mediator because at times you know when you're in the midst of an emotional situation it's hard to think logically or hard to process because my husband is just as sensitive and emotional as 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 any woman can be is he and, so, really? and i'm very i'm very logical so i don't function i can't function with all that emotion that doesn't work for me i'm like dude i can't okay let's just stop and let's just think about this well if he, cause, you know because he's very he's very he's a very passionate man mm-hmm. so it's but i don't and i don't process that way so that's a challenge for us so, and it's usually the other way life. around. It's usually the other way around. But being an engineer, mm-hmm. you come from an right. analytical, problem-solving point of view. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is broken. Let's good fix good this. Man. Yeah, my mm-hmm. husband is like that. If this is broke. Let's fix it. You know, if you come to right. me and tell me something is wrong, I'm going to fix it. Just so you that's know, I'm right. like, when I come to you tell you something wrong, fix it. Handle it. Mm-hmm. And that's me. That's what, you know, I want to resolve it. If there's a problem, fix it. That's why I went into engineering. That's my personality type. Mm-hmm. And so, but Dr. Reed became like a mediator for us because my husband also confided in him. And the good thing was, Dr. Reed wouldn't tell me what my husband said and didn't tell my husband what I said. That's he would, good. He, would, he got both sides of the story, and as an unbiased party, he would give us the right uh, response, you know, information, action, reaction, so that we could diffuse situations that we, he and I, couldn't handle because we were in the midst of it. We just, ah, you know. Yeah, and when you so screaming and hollering. Uh huh. And so, and that really helps strengthen your relationship. So now mm-hmm. we're actually we're doing a lot better because actually, I would say, Mother Love, honestly, about two when I when I wrote the book on step families, I was at my breaking point, and I was actually going to leave my husband. Oh at man! At that point, I was going to leave. I, I was ready to go. I was, I'm like, I'm done. Everybody in this house is disrespecting me. I'm finished because I'm a, I'm I'm a I think I'm a different type of woman. I, and everybody wants to be loved and respected, but right. I want to be respected. Okay, that is my primary. Don't disrespect me, because then I get into this whole nother level. Corporate comes out, and I can get awful. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're turning into one of them bosses. <laughs> right, right, you, right, right. So, oh, oh, when you said it's a little bit of you and all of them, so it was a little bit of Roxanne in you, too, huh? No, no. Roxanne is a real boss that I had. Oh, really? Yeah, Roxanne. <laughs> yes. That was really a boss of mine, my very last boss. Uh-huh. The company that I used to work at was Delphi. When they closed... That's why Sherry is me. Sherry on the job is me. Okay. And her conservativeness, the way she looks and carries herself, that's me. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, I really had a boss like that, and she was awful. And so uh, even the um, situation where the girlfriend called and acted like she was a, a slave escaping the taskmaster. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my girlfriends. She called me to encourage me because this lady, this lady was trying to drive me up a wall. I was just saying, and she would get mad because I was saying, and get the job done she was just she just didn't like the fact that i was still effective at what i was doing even though she was trying to shoot me down Let's see it's and it's all yeah, it's, 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 it's always some chicks like, like, like that and we, we, mm-hmm. we're almost out of time but i wanted to touch i want you guys got to get this book the forbidden secrets of the goodie box what your <laughs> father didn't tell you and your mama did not your mother didn't know and then you've got a third book the tainted mirror i'm going to get into that one can you share a little bit with us about what the what the basis of tainted mirror is Yes, ma'am. Tainted Mirror and Anthology is my second book, and I wrote that book because I teach writing and publishing to inmates and high school students. And um, so they eventually wanted me to publish them in a book. Initially, I was just teaching them the principles. They wanted to actually be published. So I put this book together so that they can have their stories, have a voice, and so it contains stories from my high school students, which I have entitled The Passionate Pen. Uh, It contains stories from inmates. It contains stories of people who were ex-mates or outmates, and then just stories of people who overcame addiction, substance abuse, verbal abuse, obesity, sexual abuse, any type of thing that can reach, keep you from moving forward, reaching your potential, something someone said, someone did, or your own stinking thinking that keeps you from moving forward. Because the catchphrase on that one is what's keeping you from your destiny. Mm-hmm. So we can make excuses all day long and never move forward in life and get stuck because we don't see the options or we don't realize that why I am where I am is because of who I am, what I've done, the choices that I've made. 
Well, so that's, uh, this book is a powerful book. I will enc- I would encourage each and every one of you to go to a bookstore near you or or go online to penoftherwriter.com. Pen of the Writer. That's your website, right? Pen of the Writer? Yes, ma'am. Pen yes, ma'am. of the Writer dot com. And I'm telling you, you will absolutely enjoy the reads of Valerie L. Coleman. I thank you so much, my dear, for taking time out of your very busy schedule. And I wish you the best of the holiday season. Thank you so much, Mother Love, and thank you. You are so welcome. And we will be back right after this. This is what you're planning.